Welcome to the OnlyFans Secrets Marketing Podcast. The goal of this podcast is to help both new and established OnlyFans creators learn the basics of online branding, marketing, and promotion to help you make more money with your content and maximize your time online. My name is Richard Lewis, and I have over 20 years of internet marketing experience. So let's get started with today's topic. And that topic is Discord and OnlyFans, the good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, so I'm excited to be back on the podcast after this very eventful week. Uh, I'll give you all updates at the end of the episode on what has been going on you know, with my company promotions and the podcast mission to end scams and the OnlyFans community. Uh, But right now, let's get into the episode. So for this episode, I've decided to discuss, you know, the platform Discord and how it can be an asset to OnlyFans creators. And I'm also going to touch on the negative aspects of Discord as well as it currently stands. So first of all, you're asking if you're not familiar with Discord, what the heck is Discord? So, you know, for those not familiar, uh, Discord is an instant messaging digital distribution platform uh, designed for creating communities and uh, known as servers. And you can communicate on Discord using voice calls, video calls, text messaging, you know, uh, and you can share media as well. So basically, it's just, it's like if you took a whole bunch of different apps and put them all together, that's Discord. Um, In my blog uh, that I wrote about Discord this week, uh, I kind of described it for those familiar with Reddit, because most OnlyFans creators at this point have had to become familiar with Reddit. So I say that it's like if a a subreddit uh, was both a community, an open discussion platform, and a a file sharing platform, you know, all at once. So it's it's a lot. Um, And it was created in 2015, and it recently turned down a $10 billion offer uh, to be bought by Microsoft. So this is definitely a platform that is likely to stick around, and that's why I'm discussing it in length. Uh, it's a newer platform, which means it's going through you know the normal you know growth pain stage that a lot of new platforms go through. So I'm going to start with the good, like what's good about it. Discord, the good for OnlyFans creators. So. As I've spoken previously in the podcast, uh, anywhere you can build brand identity away from OnlyFans <laughs> is positive. So this is a place where you really can, you know, interact and build your brand with your fans. And as I mentioned with the growing pains, it's kind of the wild west. So Because of that, it offers you a lot of things that you can't get from OnlyFans, that you can't get on more established social media channels. So I'm going to kind of list them out. And as I usually do, I will go back and talk about each one. So Discord gives you the ability to create a community you can interact with in real time. It gives you the ability to interact in ways only fans cannot. It gives you the ability to interact without only fans word police, uh, quote unquote, or restrictions. Uh, it gives you the ability to invite people for free to then market to them. Uh, Discord gives you the ability to create a VIP experience for possibly top tippers or your best fans on OnlyFans. It gives you the ability to act like Patreon without paying Patreon-like fees. Uh, It gives you the ability to create saved groups and save material or media in those groups. It gives you the ability to interact with a highly male target audience. It gives you the ability to set levels of access to areas and perks. 
and it gives you the ability to show that you are customer friendly. You know, you're down with modern communication techniques and a real person, you know, not too good to get down with real fans. Okay, so I'll start with the ability to create a community you interact with in real time. So that is the big draw of Discord. Discord came out of the, I would say, predominantly male, late night, stay up all night, play games kind of vibe community. And so what those people were looking for is they were looking for something that they could communicate, you know, instantly back and forth with. And Discord kind of filled that role. And from those origins, now it's become more popular across the board. So the real key for Discord was that ability to communicate in real time. And that is very helpful. It is something that's very difficult to do with most social media platforms. Uh, No matter how much you want to make certain social media platforms feel like real time, Um, You know, you can go and do live streaming on those platforms, Uh, but, you know, even if you try to tweet, let's say you try to tweet every minute, you're going to get in trouble from Twitter. If you post too much in certain areas, you're going to get in trouble from a lot of different uh, social channels. You know, even if you're trying to post in Reddit, again, problems. So the being able to commu- communicate with people in real time is really something that's been taking off. I mean, I'm sure everyone knows that voice social media, you know, uh, audio social media has been taken off in the last a year as well. Everyone's just rushing to try to come up with the audio social media platform that's going to take off. And, you know, something like Discord already there, already, you know, doing that. So you're able to communicate in all these different ways as far as text and voice and video, all in real time. And I think that really sets Discord apart. And you already have the community of people who are already engaged. So that's great. That uh, that real-time ability to communicate in many different ways, not just the limited to as far as OnlyFans where you can go live. And you definitely can. Uh, but it's, it's a process of saying, okay, well, I, this is the time that I'm going to go live and, you know, everyone needs to know while discord, it's like, you're popping in, you're popping out, you know, it's fine. You're right there. You're, you're not there. There's, there's a group of people who are going to be coming on at any time of the, the day onto a server if you create one. So again, very valuable. Okay. So the ability to interact in ways only fans cannot so, you know, as I mentioned, you know, they, you can create your stagnant, you know, audio or video or picture and post it to your wall on OnlyFans. And, you know, there it is. Now for Discord, you're talking about people interacting in real time, dropping pictures, comments, you know, audio, all of that's happening. It's just a more interactive place where you can do so much more and certainly understand why OnlyFans has its limitations that it does. And it's possible that OnlyFans will improve its platform over time, uh, maybe to include some of the things that are going on with Discord. But as I mentioned, with it being the Wild West uh, right now, um, you know, Discord is doing things, and we'll talk about that later in the podcast, uh, that are problematic Uh, But it also gives you, right now, the ability to interact with your fans in ways that only fans uh, cannot. Okay, so you also have the ability to interact, you know, without only fans word police or restrictions. So, as many of you know, if you try to actually have a communication, you know, through (laughs) messages or through DMs, Uh, There are a lot of restricted words and, you know, it'd be funny if uh, someone has ever written a blog or tallied all of the restricted words. Um, I think someone wrote the other day that whip was, you know, taken out of, you know, uh, the uh, message that they were sending. So they obviously can't talk about, if you're in the United States, the majority whip in the Congress because 
Again, that could be, you know, taken out of <laughs> your message, uh, which, you know, is a problem. Like, there are words that have many different meanings, uh, but the word police over it, OnlyFans, they're going to yank that out. This is not an issue with Discord. Uh, you're able to say whatever words that you want to say. Um, you know, again, I'll mention later in the podcast, but... Uh, Discord does not go into private servers and police. Uh, they believe very strongly in privacy. So unless a server is reported, they're not coming in. So that means that words, whatever words that you want to flail about in your uh, server with your fans or that they want to use is fine. So you're able to actually tell people about what you do, what you want to do, uh, what kind of content you might be producing. All within Discord, it's totally fine. Now, you also have the ability to invite people for free to market to them. So, I mean, this makes sense. Uh, what happens with Discord is, is that you, you know, are given an invitation link. So, it's not straight up just a link that takes you to the server. It's basically a, like a free, think of it like your free OnlyFans when you invite someone for free to only fans, they still have to subscribe. They still have to say, I subscribe for free. It's very similar. So when you get that invite, it's supposed to be generally private. So the way that it was, you know, kind of designated in the in their minds when they created Discord was, you know, we're playing a game and, you know, we have our group of people that we play the game with. Here's an invite so you can come on to my Discord server. It's private. Only you get to see it. Now everyone just gives out that link in hopes that people will come in and join their servers. So, you know, basically you're able to then give that link out. It's an invite to your private server. And people will be like, oh, that's exciting. I'm getting to go on to that. And they'll go ahead and join. And at that point, <laughs> half of what you're doing, if you feel like it, can just be marketing to them. Um, you know, we've gone over like how self-promotion is frowned upon on most social channels. Um, you, know, you take something like Reddit, it's very frowned upon. Um, you know, you can self-promote on Instagram if you pay them. Uh, well, not necessarily everyone, as you know, but, you know, uh, most groups of people on Instagram, you pay them and they'll be happy to promote you. Uh, but if you're trying to do, you know, your own promotion, it doesn't go as well. Uh, but on um, on Discord, if you have your own server and you get people to come onto that server, you can market to them all you want. So basically, you're creating a giant marketplace if that's what you feel like doing. And not very many people are going to frown upon it. They're going to say, okay, well, you know, if I join Sally's page and I'm into Sally and Sally wants to market to me the entire time and tell me about, you know, her OnlyFans, that's fine because I went ahead and got the invite, accepted the invite. It's very similar to, you know, accepting a free OnlyFans page. Okay, so you also have the ability to create a VIP experience for top tippers. Now, this is something that I just uh, am thinking is a good idea. So for a lot of people, they are going to just invite people to a Discord server and in hopes that they will then interact with them. But I think that you probably should use something like a Discord server as an incentive Say, okay, you know, those people who tip a certain amount this month uh, get to go to my Discord server. Uh, or if you're one of my top five fans, and again, we've gone over top five fans and how OnlyFans actually calculates that. It has nothing to do with money. It has to do with interaction. So if someone just likes everything you do or comments incessantly and, you know, actually you find them kind of annoying, uh, they can still be one of your top fans. Uh, so you might want to base it on tips or amount of money spent, something like that, or someone who, you know, okay, you get to have access to my Discord server because I've created this PPV content and everyone who buys it, you know, uh, this week gets, you know, the VIP access to my Discord server. That's how I personally would use it because as we're going to go over later in the podcast, it's something you have to do work on. It's something you have to monitor. So you know, once you create it, you want to make sure that it has value and that it has value. To 